All right, Shalom, Shalom. We are the real Hebrew Israelites coming day in and day out to prophesy the downfall of Babylon the Great, which is America. First off and foremost, our praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Karkadash. Double honors to be all the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to the elect, wherever you may be. Brother Shapai, you're coming at you again with another quick lesson through the spirit of power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Today's lesson is uh, pretty much uh, a testimony I had. Um, I recently got back from uh, vacation, and uh, let me just tell you a story. Um, I took a plane. Now, ironically, on the way to wherever I was going, I was praying to the Lord, you know, just having a little conversation with myself, and I said, man, that would be wrong if I seen the chariot outside of my plane window. So, um, you know, I didn't think of nothing after that. You know, I'm searching, I'm looking. But it was in, like, the daytime, right? So uh, four days later, on my return back to Chicago, uh, you know, I'm high in the sky. At this point, we just in cruise control. So we're like above two layers of clouds. And uh, I see other planes, but, you know, I see them flashing on and off. And, uh, you know, I'm looking, I see a couple. And then all of a sudden, I just see a, just a bright orb. And it's just, you know, it's floating. Now, on one side of the plane, uh, the east, the east side was already dark, and then uh, the west side, which was on my left hand side, because I was flying back north. Uh, you know, you have the sunset. So I'm looking. I say, well, maybe it's just the sun glaring off the plane. But I'm looking. I don't see no other flashing lights. So I'm like, damn, it's pretty bright. You know, I'm looking out my window. Then all of a sudden, now my head still thinks it's a plane. All of a sudden, it just whoo vanishes. Like, in, in a, a blink of an eye, I said, nah, there ain't no damn plane. So I'm looking, I'm searching, and then we so high, even if the plane would have turned or took a dip, you know, I would have, I'm so high, I still would have seen the plane, but I couldn't find it. So I'm like, and there was no clouds around, you know, all the clouds was below. So I'm like, damn, that was a chariot. And it was ironic. You know, I asked the Lord on the trip, you know, headed there. Then on the way back, I'm not thinking about it, and the Lord shows me one. It was just, it was glorious because, you know, I'm going to get a couple of scriptures. You know, that's how Yahweh uh, Shemel Shai is coming to save us, man. All right? When he says, uh, matter of fact, let me get this. Well, let's get this. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 17. Let's start with 16. Oh, my gosh. I'm starting at 13, right? Uh, this is 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. But I will, have, uh, I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, uh, that you may not sorrow, I mean, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. All right? see, most of the people in this world think a person dies, that's it. But we have hope. We have hope in the resurrection, right? For if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so them also were sleeping Yahweh Shai, will the power bring with him. All right? Because he said those which are sleeper, those are going to be the ones that rise first. That's what the, that's what it says in the gospel. All right? For, the, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, okay? That we which are alive and remain until the coming of Adawan shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of, uh, of Yahweh, and the dead of Mashiach shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, come from one another with these words. All right, now, how is that going to happen? That's the twinkling of the eye. All right, just like uh, Elijah, uh, just like Enoch, all right, that transformation is going to happen as we're getting uh, lifted up into those chariots. All right, let me, let me get this. Here we go. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We should not all sleep, but we should be changed. Now, in the Thessalonians, the ones that are asleep, which means, you know, 
They're dead in the grave, grave, put it that way. Although their spirit is in the spiritual world, right? They're asleep in the grave. Like how Shai said about the little girl, she's sleeping, all right? In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the same trump we just talked about in the last scripture, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall rise incorruptible and we should be changed, okay? So that is going to happen, all right? And, and where are these these changed bodies going to dwell in. All right. Let's get Psalms tonight, the first chapter. All right. I'm tweaking. There we go. All right. Psalms like going for, I will cover thee with his feather, feathers and under his wing. Wings, thou shalt trust him. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. All right? Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walks, uh, walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right side, but it shall not come uh, nigh unto thee. All right? So what is this? The second death. But guess what? The elect is going to be beamed up in those chariots via under his feathers, under his wings. All right. Did not the Lord said he was going to come uh, deliver uh, Jerusalem, uh, uh, defend Jerusalem as birds, as a flock of birds? I, you know, I roughly paraphrase it. All right. That, that's how it's going to happen. Matter of fact. Let's jump to 11. For he should give his angels charge over thee and keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against thy stones. Now, how are the angels going to bear us up? Via chariots. Matter of fact, let me get this real quick. Let's get this in the Gospels. All right. Let's get the breakdown. Matthew 13, 38. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked ones, which is Esau, Edom. All right. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be the end of this world. All right. Now here I go, and the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them that do iniquity, and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be welling and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous sign forth as the Son in the kingdom of their Father, who, uh, who hath ears, let him hear. All right, so the angels, all right, are going to gather up the elect, all right? Yeah, that, that's how it's going to be, all right? The Lord is going to send his angels to gather up the elect. Hey, Matt, hey, Matt, oh, no, no, Revelation says, hey, uh, Yahweh is returning with what? The clouds of heaven, all right? Which are the other chariots, man, the angels, all right? Um, and <clears throat> here we go. Isaiah 31 5, as, as birds flying, so will the Lord of hosts. I'm going to read that again. As birds flying, so will Yahweh of hosts defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it, and passing over, he will preserve it. All right, so what flies? All right, uh, it's giving you a representation uh, of uh, birds flying. All right, that's what it's representing, but it's parabolic because it's really the chariots, i.e. you have the feathers and under his wings, right? It says, so will your host defend Jerusalem, defending it. So the same way he's going to defend uh, the elect, you know, it's the same way he's going to save the elect. All right. Defending also, he will deliver it and passing over. It, he will preserve it. Preserve it from what? Preserve them from what? The plagues, the number one plague, the uh, the nukes that was uh, that we read about in uh, Psalms the fifty uh, first chapter. All right, that's how it's going to preserve it. Matter of fact, because after that happens, 
Let's get this. Revelations 21 and 20. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the power of a heaven, prepared as a bride adorned from, from her uh, for her husband. All right? Who's New Jerusalem? The elect, the rulers, uh, the, gov the government of uh, Jerusalem. All right? The government of Israel. All right? Coming out of heaven. Via what? The chariots. Because we got beamed up, the Lord covered us from the second death, and now we're, we're coming down to put the world in order. Because what? As the verse 1 says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth, so a new rulership, okay? For the first heaven and first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea, all right? So Esau's kingdom is going to be done away with, man, okay? So, hey, it's a beautiful thing how the Lord is going to come uh, deliver us out of this hell hole that we're in. All right. So uh, with that, I'm going to say all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Akar Kadash. Um, double honors to the other apostles of great millstone salutations to the elect, wherever you may be. Abba, Abba.